This video is going to be a viscous analysis of a NACA airflow. The goal, of course, is to be creating a pressure distribution plot. This is part of a series dedicated to exfoil, brought to you by the Science of Flight. Let's get to it. We're going to start with a fresh um, exfoil ses uh, session. Uh, so if you already have it open, just close it and reopen it. So um, we kind of clear out the memory that way. So the first step is going to be loading the airfoil into the current memory. Since we are using a NACA four digit series airfoil, we can just use the built-in NACA command. Uh, now I showed here two variants, uh, whether you uh, just typed in NACA without the parameter, um, that's the first one you see there, or there's a second one, which is um, if you type in NACA and the parameter on the same line. Um, the, the, those both will do the same thing. If you forget the parameter, um, as you see on that top one, Xfoil is gonna go ahead and prompt you to enter the NACA four or five digit airfoil designation. Um, and that I right there next to that carrot is just telling you it's looking for an integer. Uh, so you can do it either way. Um, once again, caps lock, doesn't matter. Um, but doing either of these is going to load the airfoil you want into the current memory. Um, now for the for this video, I'm going to just go ahead and keep all of the text that you would see in the XFOIL window. Um, I'm going to make sure it's just colored green. Um, it has a different font, so you can kind of see it right there. Now underneath the second uh, option right there where I, I, I typed in NACA 4415, uh, you see that after you enter or load this airfoil into the current memory, um, it's going to go ahead and give you some of the information about it. Right, we see the max, the max thickness, the max camber, um, and where those are located on the cord. Um, now we're, we'll have another video later that would explain the four digit and five digit numbers, what they mean, um, but you can kind of see it right here, right? Um, the four, the two fours, you see there's a max camber 0.04 at 0.4, um, and then you see the 15 right there at the max thickness at 0.15. <clears throat> Um, anyway, that's the subject for another video. But you see some other um, interesting stuff here. You know, we got some of the uh, paneling parameters used um, and we'll have a video in the future uh, all about adjusting these parameters and what they do and what they mean. So on the previous slide, we went ahead and we loaded the airfoil into the current memory. Now we're not going to be adjusting any of the geometry of it. We're not going to be um, changing any of the paneling of it at this point. Those are subjects for another video. Um, so we have the airfoil that we want to perform the inviscid analysis on already in memory, ready to go. So the next step, step number two, would be to navigate to the menu we use to perform these analysis. It's the OPER menu. The uh, OPER, of course, stands for direct operating points. Um, so this has all the commands we need to run the analysis. Uh, so right there at your typical XFOIL command, prompt, just type in O-P-E-R and hit enter. And as you will see, it will drop us down into the OPER menu and give us the OPER command prompt. Up to this point, the viscous analysis has been the same as an inviscid analysis, right? We've just loaded the airfoil and we've dropped down into the uh, menu, the OPER menu, so that we can start running some analysis on the airfoil. Um, but this is where it diverges. Um, as mentioned in the previous video, uh, the default mode for uh, the OPER menu is to be an inviscid mode. Uh, however, we're wanting to do a viscous analysis. So the next step is in this OPER menu, uh, we're going to go ahead and enter viscous mode. Um, now that's done in, um, that's done by using the visc command, V-I-S-C visc or just the letter V. V is the shortcut for viscous. Um, now if you type these in, it will actually um, put the software, put the uh, XFOIL into the viscous mode. Now it's going to require at least one parameter out of you. Um, it's going to ask you for the Reynolds number. 
So you can either type it in with the command like you see there at the beginning of step three, the first option in step three, or if you forget it, like in the second option of step three, uh, you'll see the, there that it will prompt you for the Reynolds number. Um, now, as you see on the left of the carrot, uh, you see the R there where it's prompting you for the Reynolds number. Um, that's kind of queuing you up that XFOIL is looking for a real number. Um, so uh, instead of an integer, so just uh, so you know, you have that ability. Um, usually, we it would be a pretty round number like four million, like we have here. Um, uh, I guess one of the other uh, abilities that it has that you might see there is that uh, I can either type out the entire number, four million, like in the first option of step three, or I can use some scientific notation. Uh, so that's what the four e six is. That means four times 10 to the sixth power, which would just be 4 million. Uh, so when you enter uh, the viscous mode and, and give XFOIL the Reynolds number parameter, um, you'll see that XFOIL will display for you the current Mach number uh, and Reynolds number. Um, now, if you need to change Reynolds number, maybe you entered it incorrectly or you just want to make sure that you're, you, you can't remember what you entered, uh, you can just type in RE and hit enter and and it will prompt you for the new one. It'll show you what the what the current one is and prompt you for the new one. So you can just enter in the Re Reynolds number and hit enter. Um, it'll keep you in viscous mode and just change the Reynolds number for you. Now you don't actually need the mark number to finish this tutorial, um, but we'll look at it in, in, in a future tutorial and play with it a little bit. Um, but for right now, we're just gonna leave it at mark number of zero with the Reynolds number of four million. Okay, so now we are, we have our airfoil loaded. We're in the upper menu so that we can do analysis and we've spec we've changed it from inviscid mode to viscous mode. Um, now this would be, if we were performing the last inviscid analysis, uh, this would be a similar step where we prescribed an alpha. Um, I could do that here in the viscous analysis as well. Um, I just wanted to show you a different way to perform an analysis, right? Um, this is also valid for the previous um, inviscid analysis as well. This isn't something that's specific to viscous analysis, um, but I wanted to show you uh, a different way to do it. And that was by, um, instead of prescribing an angle of attack, an alpha, uh, we're gonna prescribe a coefficient of lift. Um, so when you prescribe an alpha, uh, you, you're telling XFOIL, I want you to run this uh, analysis with the airfoil at five degrees angle of attack, and then it will determine your lift, your drag, your uh, moment coefficients, uh, all of these. This one's a little bit different. Um, instead of specifying the, air, the angle of attack, the alpha that you want the analysis run at, you can actually prescribe the coefficient of lift that you want um, and uh, and that's just done with the CL command and so what that'll do is it will find what angle of attack it needs to put the airfoil in to achieve that coefficient of lift um, just make sure that you're not trying to command a coefficient of lift that isn't um, in the kind of in the range of the airfoil you're using you know uh, for instance I have this um, CL alpha plot on the right, uh, and you see it's got a you know max coefficient of lift of underneath 1.75. So I, you know, if I try and command or prescribe a coefficient of lift of two, I might get some weird results. So just make sure that you're in um, the correct region if you're using this technique. But it's just a different way to do it, right? You know, maybe I wanted to see, um, you know, what angle of attack I needed to be at to have a certain CL. I could use I could do it this way. Uh, so it's similar. Uh, with since it requires a parameter you can either enter the parameter with the command as you see in the first option here or if you forget the parameter and you just type in the command it will prompt you for the parameter in this case the lift coefficient you see there where it says enter lift coefficient now that R to the left of the carrot is just telling you it's looking for a real number uh, instead of an integer so I could put 1.05 if it was looking for an integer, or integer obviously I could only put like one or two. Uh, so this is kind of how you prescribe a, a coefficient of lift. 
Um, you can do this, like I said, for the viscous analysis as well. Um, I just wanted to kind of use this tutorial to show you another method as well, um, but I could have easily prescribed an Anglo tech here as well. Now, since we're in viscous mode, uh, you'll see down there, um, I, the smaller text is just what is shown uh, after you enter the command. So you'll see it's saying it's solving the boundary layer system and it's going through a couple of iterations. Um, so that's kind of what you see on the XFOIL uh, menu when you do this. So something I figured I, I probably should mention while we're here um, is that in the previous step we uh, entered into viscous mode. Um, so if you look at the, the command prompts here in this step and going forward, you'll see that um, right there where it says dot O-P-E-R, um, there's a V after it instead of an I. You know, when we were in, in viscous mode, you would see upper I, uh, but now that we're in viscous mode, you'll see upper V. Uh, so if you did not start with a fresh uh, session of XFOIL and you were already defaulted into a different mode, you might, you might already be in viscous mode. Um, so check, uh, just check real quick to make sure that you're in viscous mode uh, before, before prescribing this coefficient of lift. So similarly to the inviscid analysis, you'll notice that as you prescribe the coefficient of lift, XFOIL will uh, generate the pressure distribution plot automatically and open it up in a new window for you. With the default shown here to the on the left of the, the slide. So this slide should look really familiar uh, if you watched the last tutorial. Um, the only difference is that you'll see that uh, there is some more information contained in these plots uh, since this is the inviscid analysis. You know, you'll still have alpha, coefficient of lift, coefficient of moment and drag. Um, you'll also see uh, what is really valuable, the lift to drag ratio among some other uh, values there. But something else that's interesting that you'll see uh, is that um, on the airfoil shape at the bottom, you will actually see the boundary layer that XFOIL determined for that airfoil at that particular um, flow condition. So you'll see, and it uses different colors so you know the difference between the upper surface and lower surface, um, but you'll see the boundary layer that it solves for um, laid on top of the airfoil. Um, you'll actually also see up in the plot portion in the uh, CP versus X plot, uh, you'll see the dotted or the dashed lines which would represent the inviscid analysis values um, and you'll also see just the normal colored lines and that would be your viscous analysis uh, values or results um, so it's kind of nice that it just overlays them both on the plot for you uh, you also get to see what the boundary layer looks like um, and you actually get some uh, additional information on the top left of that plot which is very valuable um, and as mentioned before you know you have some other options for for this plot dealing with this plot you know you might want to use the hard command to create a hard copy of it um, which would just be a postscript file uh, saved in the xfoil folder the same folder where the dot exe file that you used to start xfoil is going to be in there um, and then you have the Anno, where you can annotate the plot. We'll cover that in its own video. Um, and then you have the grid as well, where you can put the grid on. And similarly with the inviscid analysis, the tutorial we did in the last video, um, if you're wanting to move between the default uh, pressure distribution plot there on the left to a vector um, arrow uh, that you see there on the right, uh, you have those both of those commands, the CPV if you're wanting it to be changed to the vector arrow plot and the CPX if you want it to be the, um, the typical CP versus X default plot there on the left. So you have those two options as well to switch between the two methods. In a future video we'll cover uh, alterating or manipulating this pressure distribution plot uh, in case you wanted it to have a different kind of visual um, 
look to it. You know, if you wanted to change the axis values, if you wanted to change, like add notes or stuff like that. So we'll create a, a separate video just for that uh, in the near future. We're gonna go ahead and end the video here. Uh, in this video, we had a brief step-by-step -step tutorial on performing a viscous analysis of a typical NACA airfoil with the goal of creating a pressure distribution plot. In the next video, we, going, we are going to cover loading an airfoil into X-foil from a file. And we'll cover it all the way from um, downloading the coordinate file from a database, going through the file, make sure, making sure it's in the proper format, um, saving it where it needs to be, and then in XFOIL, performing the commands that need to, do, need to be uh, done so that that airfoil could then be loaded into XFOIL correctly. It should be a highly valuable uh, tutorial since you're not going to just cover knock off four and five digit airfoil. So you'll definitely need to know how to be able to load a different airfoil, a custom airfoil into XFOIL. So that'll be our next video. So if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. And on the next slide, click that link to the next video. And I will see you in the next video.